Hello, everybody. We're just waiting a minute to make sure everybody has time to join. Um, so we'll just give it a couple of seconds to make sure everybody's in the call. All right. Um, we gave it a couple of minutes. I'm sure some participants will be joining bit by bit. But um, those who are already there, I want to say thank you for joining us today. Today, we're happy to present to you a short presentation to kind of get things rolling and discuss the challenges of sustainability, of course, with digitization as a way out. So I'm happy to join you here today. Um, my colleague, Christian Jung, who is a sales account executive from TCOM, is here. He'll be going into more depth into the topics we're going to be discussing today. My name is Bradley Robb. I'm also a sales account executive here at TCON, and I'm happy that we could um, get you to join today. So anyway, to start things off, let's talk about TCON. TCON, we're used to tackling difficult challenges. We're used to covering and building in and filling in the, the process and business requirements of companies on standard SAP. We see that as in a way as kind of building bridges, so building a technological way to cover various different aspects. And that is what we see as our challenge on a day-to-day -day basis. One of our customers, Dr. Hornfick, who I think actually summarized it quite well, what I see is our, our strategy. So there's nothing that SAP is not able to do, but you need the right translator for that, for the system and for the way we do our business. And that's what we see as one of our main jobs, is to be the translator for the business requirements of our customers and the companies going into the future. And SAP has built an amazing platform in order to do that. However, we have gotten used to building bridges. And now we have to build something that we have never built before. There's a new challenge coming to us and all of our customers. And it's going to impact all of you. And in order to go into more detail about that, I'm happy to hand over to my colleague, Christian. Hi, everybody. Thanks that you're joining us. Yeah, as Brad said, uh, we are skilled to building bridges, but uh, now we have to build something that we have never built before. We want to guide you to a path, to a path to a very scary place. It is uh, the path to Mount Fear. What does it mean, Mount Fear? It is nothing more, nothing less, than a mountain full of new regulation and requirements coming up during now and to the next years from the authorities. And it doesn't matter if you're a big company or a small company, if you're producing in Europe, in Asia or in US, or if your customer mainly sitting in local markets or in overseas markets, it hits you direct or indirect via your own requirements or requirements from your customer sides. And when we look um, to the time scale here, there are three topics that are currently um, uh, work with, uh, we have to work with. This uh, reporting standards on the, on the very right side, the uh, uh, CSRD, and uh, on the left side you see the uh, sustainability due diligence, and on the lower side you have the new and nice uh, deforestation regulation. Um, that means that um, we need to, to find new models uh, in doing our business. And what prevent uh, companies to uh, be avoided from, from um, uh, sustainability? Sustainability is more or less seen as a money burner. Um, most of the uh, own uh, old CEOs are thinking that uh, um, uh, spending uh, money in sustainability efforts is spending uh, money in discipline advantages disadvantages for uh, in, in comparable to your competitors but um, you're thinking in um, needing new uh, energy forms new machines new suppliers new components and everything is um, um, connected with costs but you have to see the possibilities uh, when it comes to sustainability when it comes to to your customer side, then a greener product, a greener image will help you to gain new orders and to keep your existing business. When it comes to employees, you, you know that you have uh, problems to find skilled people and the new uh, Jay-Z, they are looking for 
uh, sustainable and responsible companies in the future. So you have to take care on your own image and your own products to, to keep it clean, to attract this new uh, uh, people there. And when it comes to, to government, you have to avoid penalties because of bad reporting. And when it comes to investors, it's very interesting because investors are looking more and more uh, for your risk management, for your green image. So if you want to have good conditions for new loans, then you have to take care on, on your sale and when it comes to sustainable business. What does it mean to transform from a profitable to a profitable sustainable business? That is a big change of your mindset because you see here a picture that is a, a picture from um, uh, an, um, a system what is currently uh, what is what is it? Um, it is an, your, your model of you you running the business. It is a one-dimensional view of business. It's more or less profit orientated. So everything what is outside your 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 focus, meaning supply chain or environmental things, they're out of your scope. And you we need a, a paradigm um, change. It is a change to a three-dimensional thinking meaning that we have to take over more responsibility for our environmental things and to our supply chain. And if we do that, we have to change a lot of things in our business models. And that means that a lot of new data is com coming up to you and you have to handle that. It is a risk assessment, a risk um, evaluation and a risk management at the end. You, set, you have to set KPIs and people are looking for uh, for your behavior, how you handle these KPIs. And to make it possible, our point of view is that digitization is a multi-tool, the leatherman to get control about the requirements what are coming up from the authorities. Um, we have to record data, you have to report them and you have to act. So you have to be able to take data-driven decisions. And when it comes to the paper industry, for example, I know all the business uh, um, we, we are talking about is now that we have strong uh, decarbonization targets. When we're talking about decarbonization, we are talking about scope one, scope, scope two, and scope three emissions. So it's a Scope one is a direct emission, what you use uh, for your own power plants. Uh, uh, scope two is uh, the um, indirect um, emissions that is everything what you're buying uh, on energy and scope three the big black box is the most important um, evaluation for, for most of the companies because here you have everything what you produce and everything what you're buying in co2 emissions for example and that is uh, at the end it is scope three what you're giving away at an, uh, as an information to your customer in the paper industry, in the, in the metal industry, in the chemistry industry, they are very uh, energy intensive. So scope one and scope two are very important because you need a lot of energy. And so you have an, a lot of CO2 emissions here. And we want to be able to enable you to give you more transparency on the product side. Uh, we are talking later on uh, our MAS system and we're coming back to that later on. So what does it mean? What what kind of tools we have? That is uh, on on side from from the SFP, uh, you have different tools here. Uh, you see that? No. Yeah. 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 So sustainable footprint management, the Arriva supply uh, risk when when it comes to the supply chain due, di uh, due diligence and uh, response, uh, responsible design and production, product compliance, and the ERNS workplace safety. There are strong tools within the SAP and that you can use for different kind of uh, needs what you have from, to do for, for your KPIs. And uh, from our side, our Tikan own products, the PLC cockpit is a calculation tool. I want to spot it on uh, a little bit later. The so supply evaluation for the to, uh, supply chain due diligence, the logistic footprint and our MS cut in our trim uh, solution. It's a, a, a trim optimization tool. So we have a small spot on the footprint management first. That is an, a tool where you can collect and analyze data from your suppliers or for, uh, from data banks. 
um, in, in the first time, I think um, we have um, quite less data from our supplier, so you have to take average from uh, every data from uh, data bank. And here you put it in, and this tool will connect it also to other SAP tools. So here you can set also the targets uh, for your KPI, the manager. Our PLC cockpit um, is a calculation tool and um, make it possible to take in also CO2 emissions from, uh, from different um, products, from components. You can compare easily uh, productions. We are out. No, it's good. Yeah? You might want to... Okay. Sorry, the screen just went out. We're keep going. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The so PLC cockpit uh, takes in also um, the CO2 emission and variable costs from the future. A very interesting cool, a tool because um, CO2 emissions will play a bigger role in the future. It's not only the price, but what you have to calculate, you have to calculate also the, the emission and the um, uh, environmental related data. Um, the Ariba supplier risk, I, I told you before, that is a SAP tool uh, to uh, control the supply, uh, supply chain due diligence. Our own supplier evaluation is an, a preset um, evaluation tool for our supply chain management. Uh, you can easily, uh, what is it, uh, enlarge it, adjust it, uh, and you uh, we set, uh, we, we create an, an interface for third party solutions, um, experts uh, like Ecovalis or Integrity Index, you maybe know them. Uh, and so you can um, cover also this information and make a 360 degree view on your suppliers uh, possible. Our logistic footprint, uh, meaning that uh, if you're a paper mill, you're have hundreds of truckloads every day and um, if you want to to get control about what is coming in and what is coming out in, in the CO2 emission they have to, cal to calculate the emissions from the transport also and you have different possibilities here for easy um, information you can use data banks from the officials and you can can connect it if you have um, a more complicated tool um, uh, transport like a combination from ship rail train and uh, uh, trucks, then you have uh, to buy another third party um, solution that gives you all, all this um, relevant data. And you can calculate the transport emissions then. So we have a lot of technical issues here. Sorry for that. Sorry. So. So, yeah, it's just okay. It's okay. With the MS. All right, go ahead, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right. So, um, okay, when it comes to record from, from your uh, production site, we have our own execution system, this MS CUT, and our trim solution, our trim optimization. Uh, both tools are very interesting in, in the production side. The MAS is recording every component and every time what you use for production. And we want to uh, make you aware where they, that you can use more information at that. You can um, connect energy consumptions as much as possible to the MAS system. So you, you can record also times, components, and emissions for that. So you can um, evaluate close um, um, carbon product footprint at the end. And our trim optimization will help you to to uh, make a better planning possible for the, for the cutting uh, reels and have less um, loss in in, in in trim and loss uh, time for that. Um, when it when you have all this data, you have to report them. So you have to do, uh, to collect it and you have to report it. So we have different possibilities uh, from SAP, the Sustainable Control Tower, our own products. I want to spot out a little bit later here. So the Sustainable Control Tower is the central uh, platform to monitoring and managing uh, environmental related data. It is now, uh, la um, the last update brings in also the European um, reporting standards. So you have a lot of KPIs that are already in the system and um, according to the standard you have to report on. It is pre-designed what KPIs you have to use and 
how you can, uh, can get it on from, from the system. To uh, make this data more valuable uh, it is our own pro um, product, the TCON THG. That is um, like uh, we create a second currency uh, when it comes to the CO2 emissions. So you have on the other hand, you have the possibility to uh, collect data, to record data, CO2 emissions, for example, and give it a value, an actual, actual value. You are uh, able to count not only the tons you use, you can give it a value. So it is in the, on the same time, up to date, a euro or a dollar. And that is, you can use up to date and not in a quarter or at the year end, you have it visible on time. Uh, when it comes to um, data sphere, maybe you know you have uh, already a license from SAP from the data sphere. It is a, a huge data lake where you can manage data from SAP sources or from non-SAP sources. And uh, together with uh, with the analytics SAP Analytics Cloud, you can build your own KPIs and get control about sustainable issues in in your company. Yeah, and I hand over. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I mean, that was a quick run through of all the various different things which we can use in order to increase, you know, the digital platforms you can use for sustainability purposes. This was meant as kind of an initial overview of what is on our radar, what things and tools we have been working uh, with, as well as what tools from SAP we've been getting more comfortable with in order to address customer needs. But looking at that in total, I think it's rather clear as to manage all this data, to manage this flood of data coming in, um, is that digitization, in order to meet your requirements, digitization is the only option. You don't want to be doing this in hundreds, if not thousands of Excel sheets. Um, we want to make sure that we have a centralized, sophisticated platform where you can do that. And as I mentioned earlier, there's not anything SAP is not able to do. They're working very hard right now to tackle those challenges and in order to make a platform which is robust enough for our customers to build on for the future. And I think that's an important thing to go on. But of course we can hand over, I mean, there's various different aspects we touched upon earlier with the multi-dimensional view that Christian was talking about earlier. So of course for climate actions, we want to have zero emissions. We want to have a circular economy with zero waste and we want to have social responsibility. So zero inequality as much as we can achieve. So that means you know, analyzing this multidimensional approach that we took a look at earlier. However, we have to take a look at, you know, we can provide many of the tools that make this possible. We can provide a platform that is available to do so, and we can cover a lot of the processes. Um, but at the end of the day, the customers need all that in order to be able to act. So this record and report that we saw earlier is nothing if we do not act. And that's where we want to enable you and also provide the leverage with a digital platform in order to do that. So taking a look at that, I think there's a good quote from Kofi Annan that kind of sums this up well. It's, uh, you know, we are not asking corporations to do something different from their normal business. We are asking them to do their normal business differently. And I think that's a good way to take a look at it. And it's not only, um, you know, burning money, as we saw earlier, um, to a certain extent, uh, it's going to impact all of us. And this is one thing we want to be ready for and well equipped for, but it's something we need to do. Um, we were recently at a conference where we were exact that, uh, asked that exact same question from a CEO of a large paper company. You know, why should we be doing this or what does it bring the, the bottom line for the business? And it's a little bit all the topics that Christian mentioned earlier, as well as we need to get it done. We don't need to look at that only in negatives. You know, we can always turn it around and look at the opportunities it provides. So if we have that platform, which is stable and relevant and can be trusted running and managing all this, it provides resilience and flexibilities for our customers and for uh, people using the system. You, of course, as the topic of today brings sustainability in various different aspects. It also provides support for challenges we are all facing right now, skills shortage challenges, 
making sure that we are attracting and maintaining and keeping good talent at our companies, as well as digitization in and itself is a business driver where it is driving many of the different aspects we want to put together. And the transformation, we see that as a, our plan is a twin transformation. So sustainability and digitization, where they are harmonized together, you have a digital transformation as well as a trans, uh, uh, sustainable transformation in a combined corporate strategy. So digitization as the lever for sustainability and sustainability as the essence for digitization. This means that you are supporting your core businesses as well as your transformative business models. Things are getting more complex, not only on the sustainability side, as well as far as market dynamics, as far as you know, the expectations of customers, um, as well as disruption. And disruption is impacting every part of the business right now. But this can be in a positive way. I mean, who would have thought? I personally wouldn't have thought 10 years ago that we would be replacing all plastic straws with paper straws, for example, or that when I go to conferences now, I am given silverware that is either reusable or uh, biodegradable. And those are the aspects that are changing actually somewhat quickly. Those are so, in some aspects small steps, but there's much larger steps that can be done um, in your companies. So if we summarize together, so we have various laws and guidelines that are a challenge that we're all going to have to tackle together. There's going to be the requirement for transparency in the corporate governance on how we are handling sustainability aspects and various different levels. We want to have credible reporting. We want to know exactly where we're moving, where we have room, where we are positioning ourselves going forward and not be blind to what how our company is performing in these aspects. And of course, we want to be crisis resilient and competitive going forward and into the future, be able to attract the customers who want to do business with us, the talent that wants to work with us, and make sure that we're recruiting the government requirements so that we can continue to succeed. So we took a look at Mount Fear earlier, um, and we see it as a challenge. It's a difficult one. However, with the right equipment and the right team, it is possible to summit that mountain. And if you look at that mountain fear, it looks scary in the beginning, but with the right setup and the right tools, it doesn't look so bad. It's still challenging, but it's something we at TCON would like to tackle with you together. So thank you very much for your time. Um, we have some time, a little bit for questions and answers. Um, this was meant to just give a taste for the initial, some of the aspects we are we're taking a look at right now. Um, it was just kind of an introduction. We would be happy to go into more detail either in separate calls. So you feel free to reach out to us to get more information. Or if there's any specific questions you think would interest um, the other um, people watching this webinar right now, in GoToWebinar, you're able to ask questions and uh, use the chat box to, to enter something. I'd be able to see it and then I would read the questions and we can go from there. Um, we'll give a minute. Um, we have one question, um, which is for more. So for Christian, so you mentioned EUDR, but we didn't show any specific solution. Why is that? Okay, the deforestation regulation is a is a quite complex and new thing, and uh, we have to handle it from from different sides. Um, the uh, big challenge will be um, to to use a batch managing of um, your material master. So a, a batch is uh, you have to control um, every material down to the to the production side to get a traceability. That is only possible. When you, when you have an, uh, an existing management system, how you handle your uh, base material. It is, uh, for example, when you are a paper producer from, uh, with uh, food contact, when you have um, uh, special specialty papers, for example, or when you're working with the automotive industry, you have maybe already existing possibilities to make this traceability um, possible. If not, then we can help you on, on that side to um, change your material master base. 
and um, possibilities for paper mills, for pilot mills, or for, for wood places, for wood uh, converting, we can use with help from, from a third party a solution, a partner from, from a TCON. You can, you, he can help you on the very first beginning, uh, no, it's the second stage, not, not the uh, geodaten, uh, what is it? Geodaten. Um, geographic data? Not the geographic data from the beginning, from, from the harvesting, but one stage later than when it uh, when the wood or the pulp uh, is uh, arriving your your wood place and we have of course we have in in, um, in the in the uh, construction and own application what can help you uh, uh, with help, uh, when when uh, come an EDI um, delivery node with re real data or pallet data related with the uh, with a control number, reference number from, from this uh, EU data bank. That is what we are currently working on. Okay, great. Thank you, Christian. Um, so we have one more question. Um, so, so our system is not yet in the, crowd, in the cloud, so we don't have access to the SCT and SCM, SFM. Um, so how could we work? Yeah, that is... A good question, uh, and as long as the SAP uh, said, okay, they want to give us uh, or give only the cloud-based um, companies the uh, opportunity to use that new tool, we have to concentrate on our own solution. The so TCON THG or the uh, combination with the SSC or the data, ba uh, data, sh data sphere, that is one of our or two of our solutions to help people uh, that are running a uh, system on, on, uh, on premise right now but of course it is a challenge uh, with, without this uh, powerful tools from the SAP. Great thank you very much Christian so um, that was it for the questions for now if you have any comments or questions I'm going to put Christian's contact data up so you can feel free to contact him by email or you can connect with him on LinkedIn here if you would like to connect by the QR code here provided. Um, I'm sure you'd be happy to answer any comments or questions that come up of um, on an individual basis, and we're happy to help where we can. Um, but in the meantime, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to join the webinar today. Sorry for the little technical hiccups uh, in the middle there, but I hope we were able to give you an introductory uh, introduction into the various aspects we're taking a look at right now, and we hope we're able to help and kind of get, get some ideas going. Um, so thank you very much for your time, and I hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.